Christmas, you filthy animal. What is up, Nerf Nation? It's your boy Nomadico, and we are back with another Blast Review. Summertime savings are in full effect right now, and all the retail stores are trying to clear out their inventory to bring in the new blasters. Target is trying to clear out a lot of their Nerf Blasters to bring in the N-Series, as well as some of their Dart Zone Blasters to bring the new Striker 2.0 and the Venom on the shelves. Now, Walmart in their warehouses, as well as Dart Zone, they are trying to partner up to get rid of some of their older Pro lines and Max lines to make room for these new lines coming in. That is why now the Mark IV is on sale down from originally $180, then down to $129. It is now down to $89, and the Tomcat is finally on sale. Normally, it ranges at $69.99. It is only $48.99 right now at Walmart, and the Bamboo 2 Darts, which are normally $34, are only for $23 right now. A little bit more expensive than they were during the holidays, but for those of you that are looking for Bamboo 2s before they go out of stock, now's the time to get them at Walmart. I, of course, ordered the Dart Zone Max Tomcat. It is the blaster that's part of the Max line that I did not have in my collection, and I wanted to get a hold of one because, yes, I know that the Striker 2 is coming out. However, that has a 25-round uh, um, drum magazine. I wanted to get the full 51 just because of the fact that, you know what, I like the idea of more darts. More darts equals more playtime. So we actually got this. It took two days to deliver here at uh, in Ohio. And here is the outside box. Of course, it is the traditional Dart Zone Max box that is cardboard in shipping. We're going to open up this uh, box and see what is inside. Now, the cool thing about the box is it does tell you what is inside already, but let's see just how that works. Of course, it should come with the blaster. It comes with the 50-round drum magazine. It should come with 50 of the Max Ruby darts. And also, it comes with the adjustable tactical stock, the detachable muzzle brake, as well as some eyewear, and yeah, tactical sights and a stock rest. So let's take a look at what this blaster looks like. All right, so we do not have a standard Dart Zone Max box inside here. It is just the cardboard, and that is okay. Of course, inside we have our instructions, which I will probably end up reading this time, only because of the fact that I have never actually loaded one of these uh, drum magazines before. And you get the warning, please do not return to the store, because they will not refund you. Send it back to Dart Zone. And you get your typical little Dart Zone, uh, I guess, brochure that tells you all the different Dart types. Yay. Now, I will tell you, though, that uh, contrary to what they have here, some of these standard length darts are just not available for sale. You cannot find the Bamboo 2s. You cannot find the Ember Strike full legs. The only ones you can find in full length right now are the Chili Darts and the Max Ruby Darts. So don't even bother asking for the Bamboo 2s because they only ever came out with the uh, Mark III and I want to say the Mark 1.2. Um, everything else is just half lengths. All right, now, we have some plastic strips here, so let me go ahead and actually get my snips so we can cut these out. I'm just kidding. Did you think I was gonna leave you hanging there without showing you how to put this thing together? Nah, that's not my style. Now, let's go ahead and actually take a look at the iPro. Let's see if it actually does work with regular glasses. Normally they do not, but who knows? Nope, they do not. So obviously when I'm using this in battle, I'm not gonna be able to wear my glasses. Sad face, but they are stylish. Mmm. Whatever. All right, so now the blaster itself, of course, we have the main body of the blaster with the pump grip. That is an interesting product. Pretty loud too. And then you have the muzzle brake, which just, just slips on like so, and that is removable. Is there rifling in there? There is no actual rifling, rifling in here, so that really is just a break. It doesn't really do much other than slow the blaster down a little bit because of the tube ending right here and there being about an inch and a half of space between when you would measure the distance or the speed using a chronograph. So there's that. And then of course you have the stock and it looks like it is extendable. You pull on this button right here, that actually extends it out and you push it supposedly to be able to adjust it, maybe. Uh, that's interesting. I should have read the instructions on this one. Hmm. Okay, you just have to push really hard on these to actually disengage the lock and be able to close it. I don't know if how I feel about this, but oh well. Of course, you do have a cheek rest here on the side. Let's take a look at how that would work. 
yeah, that's pretty comfy. Not uncomfortable, but you might want to add a little bit of padding in here just in case if you are going to be aiming like this, uh, only because of the plastic here, it's kind of hard. And uh, yeah, no, it's up to you. Iron sights. I'm going to assume that this one, the skinny one, goes up front. It does attach properly onto this Picatinny rail, which is very nice. And then this one comes into the back, like so. That is an interesting iron sight. Let's take a look here. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Then, of course, we have our drum magazine. So once this is loaded, I believe that this should just slide in just like so. Maybe. That's how it works, I'm assuming. This little knob pushes out. There's a space for it right here. You line it up, it clips in. Again, this is why I really should read the instructions before I do these things because, yeah, that would have shown me that in the instructions. All right, so after reading the instructions really quick, it says that to eject the magazine, all you have to do is just pull it down once it's primed. So that was pretty simple. Yeah, I feel like an idiot now. Whatever. Um, I'm seeing a couple of uh, disadvantages using this drum magazine compared to, say, a talent magazine. So, and that is ready to go. Now, it does claim speeds of 150 FPS. That is typical for the max line. Uh, we're going to see exactly how this does in the chronograph. And it does claim that you can shoot up to 150 feet as well. So that rides right around there with the 150 FPS. But uh, the real cool part is the slam fire. Now, I will tell you, for a real Tommy gun, it would be nice if this was actually a flywheel with full auto. But slam firing, I'm pretty sure that could be fun as well. Let's go and actually run this through the chronograph and then just do the normal testing afterwards and see how well this blaster performs. Okay, so the chronograph got us between the 150 to the 180 range with the Tomcat. We are now out to test the distance and see if that translates to how far it can shoot. We are going to be doing an angle shot and a straight shot. Uh, we have this one primed and ready to go, so let's take it from here. So we continue to have firing issues with the Tomcat barrel. Uh, I believe that the straight shot, um, it did not actually fire the first shot. So I went ahead and fired again. That's why you see two straight shots and just the one angled shot. We're gonna measure the distance of those darts and we'll be right back. All right, so those numbers for the angled shot, we hit 175 feet. So that definitely matches what we were getting with the chronograph. Um, it turns out that the first straight shot that I did fire did actually shoot out. So that one actually hit 110 feet. Um, given at the straight shot hitting 110 feet, I just probably did not see the dart go out because I wasn't paying attention. The second one got 90 feet. So that is some pretty decent performance from the Max Tomcat. Up next, the accuracy test followed by my final thoughts. The 
accuracy test using the Tomcat. Let's see how this blast performs. 10 shots down the hall towards that target basket over there. Um, of those things so far, it's performed pretty well with the exception of the priming issues. Let's see if we can go three for three on performance. Ten for ten, spectacular accuracy using this blaster. Maybe there's hope for this one after all. Up next, my final thoughts regarding the Tomcat. And here are my final thoughts regarding the Dart Zone Max Tomcat. So I'll be honest with you, I had very high hopes for this blaster. But I want to say that it would be a great blaster, but it's not quite there. Let me explain. So performance-wise, yes, it hits all of the marks. FPS, over 150. Um, there were some times that I was hitting 180. I hit you know, constantly 170s with some darts, 150s with the other darts. The distance, it is there. 105, 110 feet, perfect for a straight shot. Angled shot, we hit right around the 180 range. Uh, 170, I believe, is what it was. Um, so that hits it there. Accuracy, it is there as well. That is great. Okay. Technically, this should be a perfect blaster. Here is the major issue I have with it. This prime is not the best. Um, so right off the bat, if you can't prime the blaster easily, you're not going to be able to fire successive shots. So that can be a problem for you. Um, now, mind you, this just might be an issue with this particular blaster. I have not heard the same results from other people. However, I am reviewing this one right here, not the one that you have at home, folks. The uh, the issue with the drum magazine, um, look, it's it's brilliant the way it, it does. It fires two darts, and then it, the way that it's designed, it rotates to the next chamber, and that is great when it works. However, all too often, as you saw in some of my testings, we had failures that happened. So there's that issue, and that is a major hit that I have to take to this blaster. Because of this, obviously, the modding community did create a talent conversion where you could just do a straight talent magwell here, and it could just be a talent fed blaster. With that, I'm sure that this would be a fantastic blaster because the talent magazines, you won't have to worry about that slippage. You could probably load a 29 uh, round drum, uh, sorry, 29 round talent magazine in here, and you could be in business. So, definitely, if you're going to get this blaster, look into that modification. Regarding other modifications you can do to this blaster, um, I'll be honest with you, you could probably put an upgraded spring here. There's probably some spring spacers. You could probably go ahead and actually brass out the barrel, get a little bit more power out of it at that point in time. But power-wise, I think this blaster is good as is. Who is going to use this blaster? I'll be honest with you. This is not for anyone under the age of 13. Um, now, can are you going to be able to prime it? Yeah, you might be able to. G-Rex is able to, but it is not easy for him to prime. This is kind of a heavy prime for a little kid. But that is why this is not a little kid blaster. It is for 14 and up, so try to stick to that age range. Where is this blaster going to be used? I'd like to say that, hey, this is a perfect indoor blaster. And if you have a large indoor area that you don't, want to, you don't have to worry about anything breaking, fire away at your heart's content. Uh, because I'll be honest with you, 150, it's powerful, but it's not going to break glass. Um, outdoors? Absolutely have at you. This is fantastic. <clears throat> now, when is this blaster going to be used? I'll be honest with you. It is perfect for a soft cap in the 150 range because, again, with used darts, you'll hit the 150s. Uh, you're not going to hit 180s with really old darts. Uh, I was shooting pristine darts, and that's where I was hitting the 170s at. Um, 175 with used bamboo darts, but not everyone uses bamboos. With the worker darts, when I was testing with those, you didn't see those on camera, I was hitting right in the 152, 153 range. So a 150 cap, if it's a soft cap, this is a good blaster to go with it. So uh, now, ideally, you would actually dump this down, use the 50-round drum magazine, and have at you in an HVZ event because 50 rounds of one drum, fantastic. That's what it's all about. How could this blaster have been made better? Um, so I'll be honest with you. The... the <laughs> The rotating drum issues is the only issue I have with this blaster. The way that it could have been made better as far as I'm concerned is that 
is called the Tomcat. It is pretty much modeled after a Thompson. Um, go full auto. Full auto uh, with a rev trigger, full auto flywheel blaster. This would be freaking awesome. You know, relive that scene from uh, from Home Alone. You know, the one that I referenced earlier in the video. But, again, that that's it. Uh, now, is this blaster worth the price of admission? $69.99 is what the standard retail price is. That price is probably going to drop because I believe Darts is right around now is going to start dropping the Striker 2, uh, which would be great because that uses a drum magazine, and it's a similar mechanism to this one's a little bit better performance. $69.99, if that's what they're going to charge you, I, I have a hard time buying that. However, it was on sale $48.99, so... Eh, that's around the same price as a Nexus Pro, and I'm okay with that. Uh, again, paying an extra, I guess, $20 on top of what a Nexus Pro costs, not about that. Not for this blaster. Not for something that performs at a much lower level than a Nexus Pro X. So... That's just my two sets. Uh, regarding that, though, again, $69.99, well. I want to thank you all for watching Secondhand Blasters. Until next time, keep on blasting.